Around the NFL Podcast. Celebrates good times. Come on. Welcome back to another edition of the Around the NFL Podcast. My name is Dan Hansis, and I am joined by a room filled with heroes. Oh, my God, supersized with heroes. Mark Sessler, Chris Wessling, Greg Rosenthal, and from, oh, my God, NFL Network Zone, Andrew Siciliano. Hi, guys. That's money with the voice, right? That's yeah. Matt Money. He, he has hands down the best voice here. That's a, that's a bold statement. The, hands, hands down. If I had his voice... Your I, voice w- I wouldn't took, be working. I, I would be at home. Countryside uh, place uh, in Italy, all the that, way yes. to the Direct <laughs> yes. TV in the Red Zone. Channel. Yes, a, a little 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 town outside Palermo. That was me, but <laughs> Trebia actually, and I made it all the way here. Well, listen, uh, Matt Money Smith. We don't pay him anything for that, by the way. He does it for free. For free. Seriously, if I had so, his voice, yeah. I would be one of those guys that did like the ten seconds of VO a day in his underwear in the studio in the basement, and then cash the checks. <laughs> you do have a pretty manly voice. That, I mean, that, you're, that's you're good. In that world. You're, you're very kind. Thank you. Yeah. But his voice. <laughs> I mean, I, I might have made a couple of All Star games. He is going to Canton. Don't sleep on Neil Zeuser here. Listen, I'm working my best. I, I, no, I'm I trying my hardest. Oh, sweet. It's fine. It's but you fine. could go to sleep on it, but you know, give me a few years like Matt Money Smith. He must be in training underground multiple hours a day. Well, like, but, like one year into the podcast, I came home one night, and we've told this story before, but my wife was just like, I, finally she listened to a show. Her only comment was, Dan's voice. Just mm, very like nice. Dan's voice. What, excuse me, I'm also on the show. Well, Simone and I have a very <laughs> nice relationship. All right, this is the Around the NFL podcast. Uh, you know, you'll see, you can watch us on YouTube, by the way. Uh, all Two of the three episodes a week are on YouTube. Uh, you could search the NFL channel and then the Around the NFL playlist. So you could, like, right now, if you're wondering, like, Andrew's dressed like a like a hot young uncle right now. So you'd be able to see <laughs> him wearing... Uh, I didn't you know, realize that we were actually on camera. Yeah. So we're, we're dressed. Wes is wearing his Homer Simpson outfit. It's just the, always the same polo shirt every day. Um, hey, by so the way, we do have three shades of blue of the NFL Network Nike. Oh, oh, we're I wear all three, three, three different shades. Sessler I have all three. demanded it. It's the only thing Seth, Sessler's ever asked for from the company that he got right away. I didn't get yeah, the black. There's a delay summer. on anything else you asked for. This is our big week one preview show. Uh, there are, listen, first of all, tonight the season uh, begins, of course, the Patriots and the Steelers. Uh, but we also have 15 games after that because... Greg, there are 32 teams, and you divide that in half, 16 games, bang, nailed it. Uh, So we're going to get into each of the uh, Sunday games, we're going to preview all those, uh, and that is the big chunk of the show, but we got some news to get to, and and of course we're also going to play a little, we're going to mix in a little one of our favorite games, What's More Likely. Andrew is going to be hanging out with us for the top of the show today. Andrew, who is, by the way, the host of Around the NFL the TV show. It's a little confusing. I don't know who came up with all this. But we are around <laughs> but, but the NFL. Rosenthal was on the TV version today. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, buried the lead. Good job, uh, Andrew. He, and, and he brought jokes. Did a great job. He it brought jokes. jokes. It, it was great because it was uh, Greg. Talk, we're going to get into Greg's uh, QB index also right. today. And and it was Greg versus Solly Wilcox. Yes. And uh, uh, Wilcox? Am I, yeah, Wilcox. Wilcox. Yes. Former NFL player versus not C-O-T-S. former NFL player. He spent... Uh, well, they were smart to keep us apart. I was in the newsroom. He, he's in the studio. Because if you put me next to him, I can be a little intimidating. Yeah, maybe it'd be <laughs> right. an unfair matchup. Sure. Put it this way. Like, uh, for the first half of the segment, Salman was looking at Greg like, you never played a down in your life. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, that's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought you made some good points. We'll get into the uh, QB Thanks. index. And I did like... I was get, You know, we posted on, on Twitter... Uh, images and video of this, and someone said that you look so tan that you had rolled in some Doritos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, have some that. I did get a lot of comments on the, on the, the tan. Are you now? Should we know. I tell them to back it off. Well, you get the free haircuts. You're throwing, you know, it's not. You're throwing people under the bus here. People that you love. What did I do? I don't know. Well, there, I mean, not not to go too deep inside the yeah. makeup room, which is a great show, by the way. If you were to have a show with just the makeup room <laughs> that would be here, pretty good. that would yes. be the best show yeah. here. But different makeup artists can give you more of a tan than others. Mm. Everyone has kind of. Okay. That's true. Too, that's too inside baseball yeah, there. But it's all, it's all part of the whole synergy. I mean, around the NFL, the show, we're going to be trying to be a little more part of it. You know, they're talking about our content more. We're, it's great to have Andrew here. It's like it's all coming together, this NFL. It's one big mishpucha. Bottom line, the boss looked 
relatively foxy on this show. I thought, <laughs> I thought was, so, and he made some relevant points, so a home run. Uh, <laughs> behind the glass, we have the great TD wearing his red Arsenal jacket. I'm whoa, plugged into football. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Isn't that Man U? Uh, Manchester United, sir. Uh, Get no. it right. <laughs> Get it right. That's the bad. You would be a Man U fan. Hey, you said Man U? Hey, Man United, Seahawks, I got it all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about, oh, wow, that's Chief bad. bandwagon you're, jumper you're, you're only allowed to root for EPL teams that are owned by NFL there we go. I've, I'm all about Man City because I'm mad for it. That's right. That's right. So why don't we uh, why don't we do some news, buddy? All right. Excited. A new news animation. Let's do it in three, <laughs> two. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> all right. This Whoa. is the news portion of the podcast. And, you know, we have a it's extension mania on the eve of a new season. We'll start with Eli Manning, the New York Giants quarterback. NFL media insider Ian Rappaport reported Thursday that Manning and the Giants are close to finalizing a four year, eighty four million dollar extension that could be signed as soon as Friday. Uh, this would give Eli, who I know we've had many a conversation about where he fits in the hierarchy of quarterbacks. Uh, but this would give him a annual salary just below Aaron Rodgers, only $1 million uh, below annually uh, in terms of salary. And, and it is very similar in terms of the structure of the deal to the ones that Russell Wilson got and Phillip Rivers got. So Eli Manning, you know, his agent, I guess, put it out there. I want to be the highest paid quarterback in the league. He got pretty close, Greg. They, I don't like that these quarterback contracts, of course, you just have to give it to him. You have a franchise quarterback. But with someone like Eli Manning, you're paying for past performance. Well, what are the odds that Eli Manning, as he gets later into his 30s, is close to a, is a top 10 quarterback? Well, Greg, he's, he's been on the borderline of a top 10 quarterback. Better odds oh. because he's throwing to Odell Beckham now. Mm. That's fair. And they win the Super Bowl under Coughlin every five years. And that fifth year is this <laughs> season. So they're, they're paying also, for the past and what's going to happen in February. Your argument would have been stronger IMO five years ago. But now we got all these guys in their late thirties <laughs> that are, are performing well, well into their thirties. But what do you like? Like you said, what do you, what are you going to do? He's you, you are paying for past performance. Here's what I do. But which, which, by the way, the quarterback position or Eli Manning is not unique in that regard. Plenty of players, plenty of athletes in all kinds of sports get paid for past performance. Now Eli was paid well, certainly leading up to this. He's getting seventeen this year, but that's the going rate. And so you lock him in, and the better question is if, 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 let's say you wanted to let him walk. You can let him walk and you tear the whole thing down, but who else are you going to go get? Here's what I'd consider doing. Let him play out this year, see what the team still looks like in a year. Is the same offensive coordinator, the same coach going to be there? Is Eli going to have a good year? And you franchise tag him, or you work out a no, new deal this, next year. And he's what's gotta, the franchise tag next year, 22? It's got to be really high, so you pay him a lot for one year. I'd rather play 22 than 65 in guarantees or whatever it's going to be. I think Eli is a unique case because I don't think he's in the same class as Philip Rivers or even Tony Romo or Russell Wilson moving forward. I don't think he's in that level. He hasn't been throughout he his career. He is a guy, though, that hasn't missed a game. I mean, sure. a lot of teams that suffer, it's because your quarterbacks aren't durable. He's done that. He's won you two Super Bowls. It's not that we love Eli Manning on the field from game to game, but I guess they're not that high on Ryan yeah, Nassib. Greg, but, Greg, if you were no, a they're GM. not, actually. And if right, you, but you've got nothing, so anyway. you start over? I mean, if with you a potentially a, G, a new coach. Greg is a GM. Hey, that's two more years for Eli Manning, and then you see where you're at at the end of the And this year. isn't a shot against Greg uh, as a GM, but you'd be a very cutthroat guy. Uh, you're not factoring in how much Eli means to the Giants organization. Fair. You're looking at it purely that he's 34 and maybe isn't as good as 10 other quarterbacks or 12 other, other quarterbacks. But the bottom line is he has some big-time history in this organization. Is paying part of the salary is that, whether or not that's smart. He's been paid business. like a top three quarterback throughout his career because he was the number well, one. Well, because pick. he was number one. I, see, I, I think we get caught. I know we're doing your list of, of uh, the quarterback rankings yes. later. And, and not to take away from that list. I, and I mean that. But I think we get caught up with, well, is quarterback A better than quarterback B? Because quarterback A got this much money, and quarterback B now is going to get this much money. It doesn't matter. There's a group, let's say you're 10. There's a group of 10 quarterbacks, maybe 12, where you say, these guys are worth it. Whatever it is, whatever the going rate is. These guys get paid. Then there's maybe your middle tier, maybe your Dalton tier. And then there's everybody else. And there's kind yeah, of the yeah. three tier of quarterback, and we could argue who's better. We could argue who's elite. We can compare the number of rings and Super Bowl trophies and all this. But if you're in that group, that's what you're going to get paid. Yeah, the Giants have a franchise quarterback, and you pay whatever it takes if you have a franchise quarterback. I, I think because you look. I mean, look at across town. Do you want to be the Jets? 
I think we'll look right. in a couple of years and it'll be questionable whether Eli is in that first group. But aren't you the one that always says that you have to pay these quarterbacks? And listen, bo bottom line, if, if Eli Manning melts three years from now, okay, then you then you look back and you say for a decade plus you had a franchise guy. And we then ate you can $20 million on exactly. the back end. I mean, I don't think in, it's that. Just burn in John Mayer's money. Go ahead. John Mayer, the singer-songwriter? John Mayer. Oh, that guy. Yeah, there's some money in that family. It's not... It's not gonna, They're like, going to be okay. In other extension news, Luke Keekley, the linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, has agreed to a five-year, $62 million extension. Uh, this according to NFL Media's Rand Gatlin. Uh, big deal there. And also, Marcel Darius, uh, the defensive tackle for the Bills, has signed a six-year, $100 million deal with the Bills. So he's locked in. Uh, that's a... Uh, almost an atomic and sue money. Chris Wessling, your thoughts on these two signings? I was surprised how much Darius got up front. Yeah, right? I, it, it sounded like a... Uh, For a guy that's suspended on something. Right, and the guy who's had multiple Kind of arrests. a knucklehead, potentially. Yes. Well, I... I mean, let's say this. If he's suspended here for a game, that means he is, quote-unquote, in the program. That means that Point. there is a possibility... Mm. With another test, and again, I'm not trying to get into his business nor breach the confidentiality of that program, but he could be looking potentially with another misstep at another suspension. So clearly the Bills are comfortable giving I don't him that even money. Know if they're comfortable. I think Greg's made this point before. When Rex comes into your building, he gets the general manager to do things yes. for him. That is absolutely true. And I don't think he wants to enter the season with Marcel Darius all hacked off at him. And as great as their defensive line is, Mario Williams paid a lot of money as he gets further into that contract. We'll see like how long he's there. Sure. Kyle yeah. Williams is in his mid-30s. He's still great, but he's not the guy you're giving. Rex thinks they're going to win a Super Bowl now. That's so that's they're going to beat the Colts yeah. Sunday. I'll tell you that. Woo. There's a bold prediction. I, I don't think it's that bold, that. actually. I, have you guys, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. Have you guys seen the Colts offensive line? You're going to get to Costanzo here, right? Anthony Costanzo got a no, contract. No, but we can. So there's another one. Four years and 42. He is the only guy. I'll see myself He's out. the only guy trustworthy. We bring it to Siliano. He's just throwing it. <laughs> but that, but that's been happening to the Colts for years now. Right. I, I, so, I, I know, tan, tangent here. I, everyone's picking the Colts for the Super Bowl, right? And none of yeah, them. Everybody. Everybody on the television, okay. regardless of the network, is picking the Colts for the Super Bowl. West I, I am not in any way buying mm. the Colts. That's it. Move on. I'm sorry, Hansi. By the way, <laughs> I, I can and Polly uh, has been suspended as well. Just a little bit of Bills. Wait, how does that work on the practice games. squad? Punch Gino. You're not ball. allowed to play, but you're suspended anyway. <laughs> Actually, that's been a fantastic way to be suspended because right. normally you'd be losing game checks in the practice squad. You get paid like what? With 6500 bucks a week or something like that. We call lunch. that the think, Ray Farmer suspension. I think you can get like a 20% discount for Uber or something. I, something crazy. All right. <laughs> and definitely um, finally in the news, uh, Cam Chancellor, the Seahawks safety, star safety, has been holding out, wants a new deal. Pete Carroll uh, told reporters on Wednesday that he won't be playing in Sunday his opener against the Rams. Then Cam Chancellor, and I don't know if this, I wonder if this stuck it to Siciliano a little bit. Cam Chancellor reaches out to Dan Helley. NFL media's Dan <laughs> Helley. You know what? Uh, Cam and I are both Virginia natives. Stuck Dan is a Maryland native. I, 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 you know what? Dan got the scoop. All right, so Buzz Dan Helley starts texting with Cam Chancellor, who has not been speaking to the media a lot about this. Uh, and Cam tells Helley that the two sides are less than a million dollars apart. He doesn't want new money. He just wants some mo money moved from 17 to 16. And just like in advance. And he says mm -hmm. that this whole thing should not be, it should never have gotten this far. He calls it petty. So Cam Chancellor, not in the mix. Uh, Mark, how big a loss is that for the Legion of Boom? Well, it's a if this huge goes loss. Wrong. I mean, their their secondary is banged up to begin with, and if you look at what Chancellor and Earl Thomas mean to that cornerback group, I think it's proven that Richard Sherman. Part of the reason that Richard Sherman is Richard Sherman is because he lines up on the same side of the ball, and you've got Earl Thomas going from boundary to boundary, and Cam Chancellor, one of the best hard-hitting run stuffers in the league. If I mean, I'm making critical. a list of important Seahawks, though, I don't know if Chancellor. He's not in the top. Well, five. he's he already may not be in the top seven or eight. Totally disagree. <laughs> Really? He's their team leader. Totally, you know what, you know what I found, disagree. and I know this is a little off topic, too. Disrespectfully, I disagree. Fa fascinating <laughs> in the Do Your Job uh, show, which was great on NFL Network, and I'm sure they'll be replaying it forever. First of all. Why they, wouldn't you? First of all, they showed Kevin Patra's name for a solid three seconds yeah, in the article. I, I, I was so proud for uh, Kevin Patra coming at you. But the other thing which was really, in really interesting, the number one point that the Patriots had going into the Super Bowl uh, in terms of their defense was to stop Michael Bennett. 
that was, that was the one player they were really worried about. And he, they thought Michael Bennett is the guy that makes that team go. And it didn't work at all. He, he is. Team. And I, I agree with you. Michael Bennett is, is a huge People piece don't think well. that, though. But top five, top seven. Here's how Cam has been described to me. It, with a defense full of tough guys and occasional knuckleheads, right, which every good defense has their fair share of the I above. Just mentioned one of them. Cam Chancellor is the alpha dog that mm. keeps them all in line. Mm. He is the policeman, the leader of that defense, and they're going to miss him. I, I, I'm not, I, know we're, I know we're not picking games here, but no Cam Chancellor. Earl Thomas has one arm. This game is fascinating, to me at least, and, yeah. and the Seahawks If the Rams had an offense, they, they could take advantage of it. Rams have beaten them there with Kellen Clemens and Austin Davis, or they were close with Austin Davis. I, mean, I think they could. No, they beat him last year there with all the trickeration. Special yeah. teams nonsense. Special teams, John Fossil and Jeff Fisher. Maybe. But here's the thing, Cam Chancellor is already the highest paid player at his position, and he is asking for money just to be moved around. Something just 27 doesn't, months later. It just doesn't quite issue. add up to me. I, so, I want to hear John Schneider's side of it. Well, they just don't want to set a precedent. There. That's what, sure. yes, Ian, I believe, reported that, that they're afraid if Chancellor does that, then the other guys will. And Wagner comes in and says, wait a minute, I got Michael to Bennett. Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett's already, already done the same thing. Yeah. Well, this doesn't happen on the Tennessee Titans. This happens when you've been to multiple <laughs> Super Bowls and people want to get paid today. All right, so that's what's happening in the news. And uh, now we will move on and discuss a little bit about Greg Rosenthal. You write the QB Index. It is one of our most popular pieces on NFL.com. I believe, as of press time, over 600 comments because Greg moves the needle, <laughs> whether it's in front of the camera. Is that how you guys a, like, 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 like determine popular? No, no the comments, comments are terrible. The, clicks. terrible. Well, the metrics are through the roof, I would guess, as well. He, yeah, he's probably, he hasn't checked out the metric. No, comments aren't typically a great indicator. Of what kind of person traffic. comments on a oh. story online? Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I there, there's, there's social media, and then know. there are people that say, I'm going to read a story and then scribble a comment on the bottom of the page. It's a cesspool. Well, I think it's a Sessler pool. It's many, a many of them <laughs> under the age of 15 just trying to get their comments and opinions out. That's an age when no one listens to Did you. Did I just yes. step in it? For a good reason. Did I somehow discourage well, interaction? You are, I don't mean to do here, that. Here, let me clean it up, okay. Andrew. If you are a uh, <laughs> listener awful. or viewer of the Around the NFL podcast and you comment on our stories, I'm sure you are thoughtful and we uh, well-mannered yeah. and a de decent human being. Just work Andrew's, on the apostrophe usage. And you know I mean? the modifier. The the I disagree with Dan. What's that? You want to get? No, I don't think they're respectful or, or smart at all. I think don't it's listen successful. to Wes either. Wow, we're good. All right, so here we go. QB index one to thirty-two. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to dig into this, but I will just, uh, first of all, lay it out there. Andrew, uh, Aaron Rodgers is in a class of his own, according to Greg, at number one, all by himself. Why is Rodgers that much better than, let's say, two through five? You have Roethlisberger, Luck, Brady, and Matt. Well, the Ryan. criteria here is if you, were, if you were, for this year only, if you just picked a quarterback to run your hypothetical team, who would you want? And I think the gap between Rodgers and... And I had Ben number two is bigger than the gap between Ben and probably the seventh or eighth or ninth person on the list. Just because I feel so strongly that he is one of the greatest of all time, squarely in his prime, uh, whereas the other guys, I don't think you can say that. I think, I I think, think Andrew Luck at his best can be as good as Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he'll pull that off this year. I think the fall off after Brady and, and again. Well, Greg is head over heels Twitter pated for Matt Ryan, apparently. This is ridiculous. Well, I'm predicting a good season, essentially. Oh, I think okay. he quietly was amazing last year. And it's year. where you are right now. It's not a career amazing. referendum or any of that. No. Yeah, exactly. It's not. Peyton Manning is down at number 10, and that's, and that's what we talked about with Solomon Wilcox uh, on the show. And he, all he did was list a bunch of accomplishments. I was like, well, that's, that's not I'm it. Well, you. If you would really rather have uh, Peyton Manning this year than Matt Ryan, I don't know. That's no, crazy. I, 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 I watch uh, Andrew and, and Baldy's takedown of Peyton Exactly. Manning. Well, yeah, let, let, let's get to that because we, we had Brian Baldinger on what I think was today. I'm, I've lost track of days. It was during the week. I don't even week. know what day it is anymore. But September. earlier this week, we looked at some <laughs> tape. Look, look, the genesis of this was, well, I'll tell you this. I had three different former NFL players. All had different degrees of success, but three guys who played in the league all last week say to me, unsolicited, oh my lord, did you just see that throw that Peyton made? This was during a preseason game. Right. It was the Niners game a couple of weeks ago, and they all unsolicited say, oh my, he can't throw. I can think uh -huh. of two Th those of the were the ones Their words, Demarius not mine. Yeah, the one to Demarius Thomas where he had him open for the touchdown. One of the out routes, which I believe was also to Thomas. I mean, he... 
this preseason, Solomon was talking about, you know, he couldn't drive the ball last year because his leg was injured. His leg's healthy That was the now, last month. He cannot drag it. He cannot drive the ball right now. No, he can't. He got, look, he, he pulled the quad on the scramble in San Diego in December. Then down the stretch, he, he, they said he couldn't push off. I'm willing to accept that. Sure. It, it, who am I to bury Peyton Manning? I'm not going to do that. But, again, those three different players looked at three different plays unsolicited yeah. and said, wow, he can't throw. Another one was a dig. It was a seven-yard dig, and he threw it to the guy's knees. Everyone has bad days, including in the preseason. And when he gets to the regular season, I still think, I asked you about the stats on the air, Greg, he is a 3,500-yard, 30 30-plus 30 touchdown guy because that's the way modern offenses go, and he can still yeah. do that. But are you asking me, do I think he's going to the Super Bowl? I don't because I don't see him getting to January and this team still winning. I just don't. The other don't. factor, too, that you're talking about where we are right now, it's going to take more than – the next couple of days for Peyton Manning to learn this offense. He did not look completely comfortable running the show in the preseason. But I think he'll get it. I, I, I think he'll get yeah, it. But you not... he had the same offense other than the first couple weeks in Denver when he came to the Broncos, and Mike McCoy blew it up and said, forget it, we're going back to what he knows, and they surged down the stretch. So you wait till he's 39 years old to change the offense. That, to me, is perilous because you got to get out to a good start if you're the Broncos. One thing, one thing that Greg said, uh, both in your piece, I believe you called – you called him a supercharged Chet Pennington. And no, then, no, a rich man's Well, no, in the piece was yes, supercharged. The then he went to rich man's Chad Pennington. Uh, Solly Wilcott's head almost exploded when really? he said that. And you know what? That is not an insult. I and I know I'm the president yeah, of the Chad yeah, Pennington yeah, yes, yes, it is. fan no, club. Really Pennington's, Pennington's arm was stronger than Peyton Manning's is right now. It, it really what, wasn't. At what point? I don't Late buy They won 10 games with Chad The year he won comeback arm. player of the year with the Dolphins? They, they won 11 games Look, with Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington, the ball took a taxi. <laughs> All right. I, I mean, he, he's trying to throw the ball down the field. They called a cab, and then that cabbie drove the ball. I think it's a credit to Peyton Manning that at 39 years old that he could be a top-10 quarterback Absolutely. without without much of an arm. It shows how incredible a player he is that he's able to overcome this physical limitation, but it's there. I mean, you, you don't have to be a genius right. to see it. I think the Broncos are actually, you know, if truth be told, I think John Elway seriously contemplated blowing this thing oh, up. Oh, yeah. Sure. And that, sure. that wasn't just because Peyton's got a shelf life that's expiring soon, but just you know, there's a lot of people to pay. Well, because when is Brett Favre's 2010 season coming versus what we this saw year? the year before? Mm. That's the thing. I'm not ready. Yeah, yeah I'm not ready to kick dirt on him yet. I don't think he'll ever play that poorly. I, right, I didn't think Favre would play that poorly. Here's the next level. Here we go. And this, it always cuts a little bit deeper who ends up being number 11. <laughs> that top 10. You put Cam Newton at 11. Ouch. Uh, Flacco, Stafford, Tannehill, Eli at 15. You got, you got Cam ahead of Flacco. I like it. Sam Bradford yeah, at 16. <laughs> Carson Palmer at 17. Teddy Bridgewater at 18, ahead of Colin Kaepernick, who just barely stays. Surprise, Kaepernick uh, made the list. In this tier. You, I, I think Kaepernick is one that I immediately believe can outplay that and make that look bad. It wouldn't shock me if he had a, a comeback season, but based on what he was there last year and kind of... You the say that this list is about projecting what they're going to do this year, and Cam bit. Newton is throwing to a bunch of number five receivers. Mm. I, I, I even mentioned in there, I almost wanted to put him that high before all the lousy receivers and offensive coordinator and offensive line ruin him, because it says I'm, I'm taking a team that I'm starting with from scratch, so I don't have the Panthers' offensive line. I think the team around him is going to make him look bad and make him get... Uh, Greg, more careful with his Panthers comments this summer. Right? <laughs> Two things. Number one, you, you guys know what Kaepernick was in the preseason, top of your head? Uh, Five of 13 for 40 yards in three games. Yes, Five Trent Dilfer said he yards. saw genuine improvement mechanically. They I don't did know if that means anything. They showed nothing. Trent knows more than I do 50 times over, and plus that he was running for his life the entire preseason with the O-line. The other thing is, uh, here's a question for everyone. Have you ever seen an NFL team roll out Wide receivers like Ted Ginn and Philly Brown as starters on opening day. How about the Browns? The Browns last year? Dwayne Bowes. <laughs> Dwayne Bowes, a first round pick. He's wow. had. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not a Dwayne Bowe fan, and clearly they're not either after this. Are, do we know he's even starting? Is, would it be Jacoby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't Andrew there. Hawkins their number one receiver in week one last year? But you're, you're he right. Was, that Josh is, Gordon was suspended. Mm -hmm. Ted Ginn has been a fourth receiver his entire career, including one of his best seasons in Carolina. And he's a nice player. Right. 
He's they, a nice return. But they have a bunch of role players stretched as number ones now. Philly Brown dropped four passes in one game three weeks ago in the preseason. I'm happy he's Philly Brown again. Oh, yeah. yeah that, you got to get that, that mojo back. That. Let's move on. Let's check out the next year. Stuck in the middle. And this was cute, Greg. You have five names here. And you got Andy Dalton right in the middle of 22. Alex <laughs> Smith, Jay Culler, Andy Dalton, Blake Bortles. He's a high rise this year. Well, I, I was, agree. I was picking Bortles rising up this year. Put Bold, Bortles higher. That, that Dalton space was actually an act of mercy. Until now, <laughs> in this for two years straight in this comp, it's always been after Dalton is really <laughs> is the is the category. You know, after but at, at a certain point, it almost feels like a, we have a pro, you know That's we're fair. bullying. But ask this question, I, like I always say, if Peyton Manning were cut, there'd still be ten teams. Fighting to sign oh, him. Yeah, of course. If Andy Dalton were cut, how many teams would be fighting to sign Three. him? Three. Five. Than that. Well, Ten, no, the, five. no, the bottom five or six of this list. The Browns. I mean, the Browns. The Browns. Yeah. How much better would I would feel a lot better if I had Andy Dalton? Well, no, potentially your third next of the category. Teams in the NFL would actively want to Bingo. sign Andy Dalton. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, so no many, way. No. So many teams are saddled this, by I don't think so. I think it's the Was bottom the Rams, part of this no. list. With the Jaguars, it. no. I think it's the bottom six teams yeah. in that list, or yep. five even, because Derek Carr is on there, and they wouldn't trade him. They wouldn't trade him. Not about trade him. What about, I don't know, what about the Cardinals? Wouldn't they be interested? What about the Broncos? Over Carson what about Arians likes guys who can throw the ball. You're saying as yeah. a backup. We're talking about as a starter. No, I mean, you know, as like somebody that's going to take over for a 40-year-old quarterback. Well, so that you're projecting it. We're saying today, though, who's going to scramble for Andy Dalton? I would agree that it's the someone, bottom part of this list. The I thought someone was going to put a cape on for Alex Smith there, but you guys all seem fine about He's it. He's so, so boring. That's good. Yeah. He, all right. You have the, sorry, Alex. you got to throw the ball past 10 yards. Let's finish up this list. The rookies. Uh, Maybe you, it was too optimistic. You pop them together. Nice. Winston, 25. Mariota, 26. And then question. Wait, you got Winston over Mariota. Well, that was how I felt really going into the whole thing. I didn't want to just change it based mm. on the. Pitch. I'm the other way around now, but again, I think you know the fact that any of us is changing an opinion after watching. That's three that's points how I felt. As Winston I like two thousand yard receivers. And then question marks, which seems like a, a kind subhead for these guys. Uh, Twenty seven, <laughs> Derek Carr, which you know. Oh, he's trending. That up. should be higher. Uh, Twenty eight, Kirk Cousins. Twenty nine, Fitzy. Uh, 30, Tyrod Taylor, and then 31 and 32, uh, the last two Browns quarterbacks in the last two years, Josh McCown and Brian Hoyer. Uh, Michael Berger, team producer of Around the NFL on the TV side, asked about an hour ago, just out loud, rhetorically, I believe, has anyone ever started a quarterback on opening day as random as Tyrod Taylor? <laughs> that was a good Berger. Charlie Fry. Charlie I mean, Fry. Charlie Fry. Fry. Got, Charlie, got Charlie traded Fry. after the week. How about Glenn Foley dropping 400 yards on somebody? But, week but Charlie like Fry that. was in his second season. Yeah. I got another Kevin one. Taylor Kelly Holcomb, great. who dropped about 400 yards on the Chiefs, but that was due to... Kelly Holcomb, if, if not for that drop by... Uh, Dennis Northcutt. Dennis Northcutt. I know your Browns history better than Dennis, the Browns fans Dennis in here. Dennis Northcutt on third down. Dang. Browns by the way, fan. I got my revenge years later on Dennis Brown's Northcutt. Browns fan. <laughs> that, what revenge? Oh, yeah, Sessler is trying to give up on the Browns. I, I had to go to Mark, the by the way. I'm sorry? Sessler quit the Browns over the weekend. I'm taking – it's a it's a trial separation. Well, that's all I need to say. About by the it. way, you're a coward. Whoa! Whoa! First of all, first of all anybody – anybody I've can been there root. for 30 years. Anybody can root for a winner, okay? Anybody can. It takes character. Out of Browns? There you go, it takes Andrew. Character <laughs> to reach for well, a listen, loser. Listen, you are preaching to the choir. I this is a I'm character. Gonna, they think this will last for two days. Now, we'll see how long it lasts. The reason Andrew's right, by the way, is because you and I have been brothers in arms as a Jets fan and as a Browns fan, and now you're going to take a year off and your team stinks, and I'm stuck with a eight and eight outfit at best. Probably, I'm not going to quit on the Jets. You, you've called the Jets the, the tenth Browns? best team in the NFL, so you must <laughs> feel I good believe, about your fortune. I always believe, and I'll never quit on my team. The Browns. I admire you. The Browns will beat the Jets. On and also, Wes, uh, Wes oh, admires you, I like you, that. I kind of agree. Yeah. Wes and quit on his team. I didn't quit sad... on my team. They quit on me. <laughs> I did this to stop taking it in the jaw day after day from you guys, and I'm, it's still going on. Enough's I did, enough. I didn't even think that it would have been kind of depressing and telling that I did come to you to help me with the end of the QB index. I, I, I I've got some Browns experience with these to guys. To break down McCown or Hoyer, who is who is the worst quarterback that's in the a tough, That's the tough. I went with McCown just because I – Feel that he, from an NFL quarterback standpoint, offers you a little bit more, but they're 31 and 32. What separates? Uh, listen, I, I, I like Josh McCown, and I, when I say I like, meaning I, I, I think he's okay. He's not going to hopefully lose a game for it. Just remember this, though, about Josh McCown. Mike Martz once converted him to wide receiver. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's great. Is there any other starting quarterback Sunday that was once converted to wide receiver at the pro level? We've seen Terrell Pryor try to go the other way. Yeah. Got cut today. Right. We didn't, we didn't have time. For right. It. There you go. Or actually the same way. Whatever. So how many more QB indexes do we get? Well, sick, you know, the rest of the regular season. Every <laughs> week we get a new one. This got him on NFL Network. He's not going to quit it's now. True. That's true. He's going to do it every day. <laughs> All right. Please. So, so yes, uh, make sure you check out. Do you have a vanity URL? I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I think it's the boss. NFL.com <laughs> slash the boss's big make project. Slash quarterback index. <laughs> slash Why not? ticket index. to the big time. I, I have to Google it all suckers. the time. I, I, think oh. the, I think the vanity URL would be a good idea. And just, I noticed you threw that in there. Right? I don't understand yeah, your tech terms. Bit of, <laughs> vanity URL? A <laughs> little bit, uh, you know. You're you know, like digital talk. I when, I, when I do long forms like the Ohio River Office, it, it's just NFL.com slash Ohio River Office. Yeah, you make a special name. I got it. it. Looks that's NFL.com slash pain rankings. You might remember I, that summer I, series. I'm learning. Then by the old Zeuser. <laughs> the old Zeuser. Um, all right. Andrew Siciliano, thank you very much for joining us. You are the host of Around the NFL, which is on five days a week. It is on five days a week. It is 6 p.m. Eastern time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. It is 2 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. It's a lot of Thursday programming, you know, right. around the game. And can I get in a plug for Sunday? Please. Okay. Do it. Hi. Direct TV, <laughs> NFL Sunday ticket, the Red Zone channel, now entering its 11th mm. season on Sunday. This is like having wow. Tony Romo on the phone. Remember that? <laughs> right. Except. It didn't matter what question except, we asked, it all came back. Except <laughs> this is five foot seven, non athletic Tony Romo. <laughs> Tony Romo was like, I got a, you know, I got an uncle. He never could watch TV, and he, he told me that now that I have direct TV. <laughs> did did he do that it. for you guys? Yeah, yeah nice little so th spiel. There is an art, by the way. I'm, I'm wasting all your time. Too. No, no, no. For, for the athlete pitch man who's doing the satellite tour yeah. and doing 50 of these things, yeah. there is an art of working that copy in yes. when you could tell the host has no interest in getting mm, there. Yeah. <laughs> Th that's an art. You did it. That's an art. Peyton is the uh, king. If you're going to get paid $50 million, I'd learn that art, too. <laughs> I mixed a cupcake and a brownie. Oh, look I'm at calling that. calling it a crownie. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> All right, so, Andrew, thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully you'll be back on soon. And who, who knows, maybe we'll be sitting next to you on the network, all of us wow. together hosting. Well, I, I hope Five you guys can. hosting scenario. Except what do my, you think about that? my set for Around the NFL on Stage 4 has no seating. Mm-hmm. So Just you guys, that. like Rosenthal was today, ha have to be in a wall like Max uh, Henry. Oh, that's right. Yes. Mm. That's one of your yes. things. Yes. Yeah, romantic. I look the hook, if you will. You look taller. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Try me on that stage. Nice Max <laughs> Headroom drop. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you, Andrew. Good night now. <laughs> All right. So as Andrew leaves, we will throw it to Thursday night, by the way. Uh, Greg and Wes hanging around working late. Mark and I not around, but you guys... Gave us a little recap of the big season opener. Steelers Patriots. Get to it, boys. All right. Thanks, Dan. Let's uh, tack on some time to this show. And we're going to preview all the games a little later. But this is going to be the longest show in Around the NFL podcast history. And you know what? It's worth it because we had a great kickoff game. Game, you know, good. Great atmosphere there in Foxborough. Two great performances by uh, the quarterbacks and the Patriots come out on top in a game that on the field felt very familiar to me. 28-21, Chris Wesseling, you're here with me, uh, just the two of us. What were, what were your big takeaways after you watched this game to start? Well, the Steelers should shut up. They talked all Woo! week about jamming Rob Gronkowski at the line of scrimmage and blew coverages <laughs> against him all game and had people like, what was the guy's name? George Gervin, I believe. No, the, wait, the that's Iceman an NBA George star. Gervin? That Some... was an NBA star. Some linebacker who's not even in the regular rotation covering him one on one at the goal line and got abused. They they had no prayer of stopping Gronkowski. Well, he was wide open a couple of times too, where they just uh, weren't lined up right. And Chris Collinsworth pointed it out. That happened a lot throughout the game, not just when the Patriots were were in the hurry up, which is like always effective. The second Brady went to that in the first quarter, that's when they got their first touchdown. They weren't lining up correctly. It looked like a poorly coached team, and it's interesting to think about. I, I talked about, I wonder what the difference of Dick LeBeau leaving is going to be. Not good on the opener. Well, I don't think that their defense played much better last year, but it's, it's a problem. I don't see the Steelers as a contender with this secondary. Unless what? they Unless they get some infusion of talent, 
they're not good enough on defense. Well, they were, Do they have a pass rush? They were playing Tom Brady. They were playing against an offensive line with, what, three rookie starters? Yeah. And on the anteater and didn't get much of a pass rush. Very interesting how Belichick rotated the Patriots' offensive line uh, throughout the night. But we're burying the lead here, which is that Tom Brady had four touchdowns after a rough preseason. You know, forget the preseason. I don't know why I cared at all about that. Looked very sharp. And Rob Gronkowski reminded me, I don't know why I need this reminder, but that he is one of the most dominant players in the NFL, one of the most dominant tight ends in history. And in a way, he's just as as important as Brady. Because if you don't have one of them, like, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. They're not a true title contender. But with him out there, you know, he's the, he's the difference maker. He's the offensive version of J.J. Watt. Mm. I mean, he's that kind of built-in-a-lab kind of player. And he's already fifth on the all-time list for career tight end touchdowns. And he's 26 years old. Well, Bill Belichick pointed it out when he was asked, what's the difference between the teams that lost in the playoffs in 2011 through 2013 and the team that won it in 2014 he said it came down to two factors our defense primarily being more consistent and number two Gronk's availability if Gronk is available Belichick and Brady can figure out the rest although they did and this is why it was familiar to me as a Patriots fan we had a a totally random unknown running back having a big game although not random if you listen to Chris Wesley on the podcast a couple days ago saying play him in your fantasy league he was in my starting lineup Deion Lewis goes over 100 yards from scrimmage he has already set his single season high uh in yards from scrimmage and he looked good he was elusive uh broke a lot of tackles after the catch and I think he's that Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead, Shane Vereen guy. That's asking a lot, but he did look great. I mean, for a guy that's... He looked better than Vereen. He's barely played in the NFL. He was drafted in 2011. He hasn't had a snap in two seasons. And, and he didn't play when he was on the Eagles. was out of the league last year, freely available to a lot of teams. The Colts cut him. He, I mean, his movement was terrific, and it seems like he really picked up where to go in the passing game and, and does those Chip option blocked routes. Chip-locked like Kevin Folk. There you go. And, and, he, and it's all about the option routes. If you're smart enough to pick up uh, what Tom Brady wants you to do, you can get a lot of yards in that offense. Oh, I think he's going to play a huge role all year. So he, that was familiar to me, the random running back. And then you have Gronk, of course. You have Tom Brady just going absolutely crazy before the game with them giving him a huge raucous ovation. That that was familiar, but a little you know, a little bit of an edge tonight. And then the bend but don't break defense. Defense didn't really look that good. You said the Steelers aren't a contender, you know, with their secondary, but it's not like the Patriots secondary looked much better. They gave up four hundred and sixty four yards, three fifty through the air to Roethlisberger. But after a while, it's just a skill they have is that they give up yards, but they don't give a, up a ton of points. They also have on paper what should be a good front seven. It hurt that Dominique easily went out with a hip injury early and didn't return. That did not look good. He looked great in the preseason. That could be a big loss. I noticed Jabal Sheard had a very good game, and I think that was a good signing. But the rest of their front seven didn't particularly play well. Malcolm Butler tried as hard as he could against Antonio yeah, Brown. Yeah, he did. That didn't, it didn't work out Antonio well. Brown, everybody knows he's got this 33 consecutive games with five receptions and 50 yards. He now has 12 consecutive games with 70 receptions and seven, seven, mm. or seven receptions and 70 yards. Pretty impressive player. I, I was surprised as a Patriots fan how relatively easy this game was. There were there were moments where Pittsburgh had a chance to get back in there. They didn't convert when well, they were inside the 10 yard line. They, they shot missed a themselves field in the goals. foot. Scobie missed the two field goals, and then Darius Hayward Bay's lack of awareness basically cost him an easy touchdown when he his foot was on the end zone line and. Right. It didn't have to be there. They could have had a lot more points. But I was surprised how easily the Patriots moved the ball. Maybe that said more about the Steelers' defense. I mean, it had a special feel to it with Brady out there. They're chanting, where is Roger? That's probably the part of the night that I'm going to remember the most. (laughs) The Patriots fans asking, where is Roger Goodell? Of course, he was at home uh, watching the game. But it it feels like more of the same. that You get an opening night victory. They're 1-0. Steelers are 0-1. And uh, the Patriots move on to what will be a tougher game, I think, in Buffalo next week. Much tougher. That's it for Chris and I. We're the Thursday night crew. Uh, We're going to send it over to Dan and and everyone else, including ourselves. But in the meantime, you guys can take a listen to some of the Around the NFL crew's highlights from the preseason. (laughs) 
Oh, come with the number one, come with the number one. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is toxic for fantasy purposes. Can any of these Panthers catch a pass? It's wide receiver Martavis Bryant smoking that sticky icky. Are you still a Browns fan? Uh, they're testing my patience. Oh. Can you pull over? Get off my back. Dan will go along with anything if it's going to make the podcast good. It's like soft tissue summer. But a, quote, significant gap remains in negotiations. Learn to be pros. I am a pro. <laughs> Excellent work behind the glass, TD, and the entire team. Uh, look back at the preseason, but now we're looking forward to the regular season and week one. And so let's go through each of the games on the schedule, the remaining 15 games, and we'll start uh, with the Baltimore Ravens going to Denver to take on the Broncos. This is our first game we're going to look at right here. And, uh, you know, two playoff teams of a year ago. And Mark Sessler, what should we be looking for here? Well, a call back to our quarterback conversation. I, you know, I didn't realize this is what I asked, but it's what I asked, and I'm going to ask it again. Is Peyton Manning a threat to produce a Favre circa 2010 campaign, and will we see a little bit of that right now, or do we still buy into this guy? I think if you watched Brian Baltimore this week, it's very likely that I, I think it's likely we are going to see a Favre 2010 campaign. Really? I don't trust Peyton Manning. But arm. we're just talking about this game, though, right? We're not talking well, about Well, in this game Manning's specifically, no, but I mean against the Ravens. We're going to find out Terrell right away Suggs. what's going on. Yeah, you got Doomerville and Suggs coming off the edge. Can, can Peyton Manning move? Okay, I don't know how good this Ravens defense is going to be. It should be okay. I just because just because Peyton Manning might struggle this year and not be as good as he was. I don't think he's going to have a. Di- I don't think he could ever have a disastrous season like you're talking about that Brett Favre had because he doesn't Why? make the mental mistakes. He, at very worst, he's going to limit mistakes and just kind of keep the ball going. Like he's not going to be worse than Alex Smith. It's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? I, like, that Favre was a disaster. I don't, I don't know why. I don't agree with that. Let's talk about the game, though, guys. He was pretty good. <laughs> well, we keep on talking about Peyton Manning's season. Well, he's got to play in this why, game. Why do you think the Ravens' defense isn't good? I think they're okay. I mean, the secondary is fine. The safety position is pretty good. They were average. a really good defense last year, and now they have Jimmy Smith healthy. I don't know. Like, they oh, seem I mean, like they'll be better to me. On the flip side, though, Joe Flacco, with an offense that does not have a lot of weapons right now, I do like Mark Tressman as a coordinator, but Denver's defense, I think we all believe in, they could be fantastic. And this is going to be a tough matchup. The last two opening days for Flacco are the two times in his career he's thrown 60 passes. Mm. They've got to get off that trend in week one. And they will because they're not going to have the ball that long. I mean, Wade Phillips comes into teams – and he takes them from 25th to 2nd. The, the Broncos are already a top five defense. And I think they're a top two or three in terms of just pure talent. And I oh, think yeah. it's going to be a very tough matchup. I know the Ravens like their offensive line, but they did not look particularly good in the preseason. They have a new coordinator. I don't think they can count on the running game as much. I think it's a very tough matchup and for the Ravens offense. I'll say this. A lot, of, um, a lot of people, and there's a lot of doubt in this room about Peyton Manning. But we all picked the Broncos to take care of business in week one here. Where's the speed element in the Ravens offense? It's on injured. Res- it's in San Francisco. Yeah, Torrey, Torrey Smith. Smith. And it's on the bench with Brashad Perriman. Yeah, I don't, tr- I don't trust them to move the ball against the defense that I think has a shot to uh, uh, knock off the Seahawks as the best. Mark Aiken was like a poor man's Matthew Slater in New, in New England, and now he's a starting wide let's, receiver for the Baltimore. Let's move on to the Sunday night game. We'll jump around a little bit here. The New York Giants will head to Big D to face the Cowboys. Uh, Wes, what are you what are you seeing here? Uh, is this going to be a game where a lot of points are scored? I don't know. The, I, I think it could be because I don't I don't trust the Giants defense at all. You've got I guess the matchup I want to pay attention to is Dallas's backfield between Joseph Randall, Lance Dunbar, Darren McFadden versus a Giants defense that just to me looks like could be the worst in the NFL. I'd be concerned if I'm a Cowboys fan and they don't come out in this game and look very good on offense, probably better than they're going to look in most games, to be honest, because what is special about New York's defense? Name one guy. That's how oh. we felt about Dallas's defense last year. That's They're, true. It reminds me a lot of that, that in a best-case scenario, the Giants can hope to scheme and have good effort and good tackling to the point where they don't get in the way enough of what could be a very good offense. And now they're going up against Dallas, who's who I mean, they're starting Tyler Patman or something at their slot cornerback. They've got Maurice Claiborne in the starting lineup at cornerback. It's not a very good secondary at all. You would think Eli. We do Hammond. like the front seven. I think they're gonna sure. we're gonna seek Dallas rush the passer in a way they haven't not last year, is, that's for sure. Greg, is your worst nightmare a, a talent deficient Cowboys defense 
or a Giants defense holding it together, and then it's an entire season of Spags talk, positive oh, Spags talk. <laughs> well, this is oh, like, what a great job Steve Spagnuolo has done. done. Right. You know, no, no JPP, and he's been able to hold his team together. Hot well, this candidate. is a game where I hope both teams lose. Or that it's a 10-10 tie, tie where somehow they just play <laughs> terrible football and no positives can be gained. So you're Terrell Suggs I'm, talking about the Patriots. I'm pretty much basically. down on both of these teams, so I'm going to be proven wrong for, by one of them we, on, on Sunday night. We have all picked the Cowboys to take care of business in this game, and I personally feel very confident about that. I, don't, I think the Giants are walking into a buzzsaw. Next up. The Eagles and Falcons. Uh, you know, this is a game that we have been all amped up, and I, the football cognoscenti, <laughs> my word of the week, all pumped up. It used to up. be Wes's word, wasn't it? I don't he, remember. He adopted it. I, I like adopted it. it. I'm giving it back eventually, maybe after this it's week. It's in your but, stable of words. Yes, we're, we're excited. <laughs> we're very excited about what is the potential of Chip Kelly's offense with Sam Bradford healthy and potentially uh, in line to thrive. So here we go. We get a great chance to see it against a Falcons defense that no one is necessarily scared of. Not a great home field advantage at uh, at Atlanta. I mean, for Christ's sake, they had a pipe and sound. They got banged for that. So it's not like that place is going to be going nuts or anything. And, uh, you know, Greg, you get to see your boy Matt Ryan. But I think, in my opinion, that's there's going to be too much Chip Kelly offense for the Falcons to handle. And they should be worried about an Eagles defense that's very good. I mean, Chip Kelly's talking about Benny Logan as one of their best players. If Benny Logan is one of their best players, hey, he can step up to the level of Fletcher Cox and Michael Kendricks and Kiko Alonso, that whole linebacker group. I mean, that front seven is among – it feels like there's a lot of great front sevens right now, but that's going to be in the mix as one of them. Well, they're all great in September before the game starts. <laughs> and then look at the matchup where Atlanta's offensive line – I mean, who's starting for them? They have to go out and trade for Andy Levitra – because they don't have the talent to run Kyle Shanahan's zone blocking scheme. They're not very athletic. I think it's going to be a rough year for that line. To answer your question, there's an individual named Mike Person who should be uh, That's starting center. Up. That is a real person, Mike Person. They got rid of their old starter, Joe Holly. They have uh, Gino Gronkowski. I mean, it, more, it's ugly. More likely to be a real person, Tom Savage or Mike Person. Well, well, we know Tom Savage. Our lab says not, they've hidden that ghost away on IR. <laughs> it, it is interesting, right at the point where we started to consider Savage might be a corporeal entity, mm. whatever whatever it is, that then he disappears for My the year. My shoulder. One thing, gone. Shanahan took the Cleveland Browns with Brian Thank Hoyer you. to a 7-4 and four record. Suddenly you have Julio Jones and Matt Ryan. The line is not as good, but I'm not writing the Falcons' offense it's, off on any level. Mark, it's Julio Jones. We <laughs> oh, all sorry. Pick, yes, we all picked the Eagles. Kevin Coleman starting this game. It wouldn't shock me if the, this is a very fun, I got excited about this one. I think it'd be a well, competitive you love the, game in you the You love fourth. the Falcons in Atlanta. You love the Falcons. You love the Eagles. I if only this wasn't played in a dome. Greg loves fake watch. noise being pumped in. Three, by the way, three games so far. We've all picked the same winners. That's going to change soon. As soon as right now, the Indianapolis Colts are going to Buffalo to Orchard Park. The Rex Ryan premiere uh, with the Bills. And, Greg, to me, this has all the markings of a, a Rex situation where he gets super hyper amped up and pumped up, wins the game. Afterwards, after the games, he's, 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 you know, mouthing off about, we're going to the playoffs. and then my We're better life, than the 85 this team, Bears. This team's better than any other team out there. That's what's coming, right, Greg? I think it is coming, absolutely. And I think one part of this game we haven't talked about all is what a great matchup for Tyrod Taylor to come out there in week one. The receivers are healthy again. I know they haven't worked out much together, but this is not a very good Colts defense, not a healthy Colts defense. I don't think they can rush the passer. I think it's a perfect matchup for Tyrod Taylor to do what he's going to do, which is throw seven-yard passes to guys who can break tackles like Sammy Watkins and Percy Harvin and Charles Clay and run around a little bit and get enough points, and the Bills are going to win this game. A bunch of guys that haven't practiced in a month. I like that, Greg. That was very good. <laughs> by the way, uh, Mark and Connor Orr both picked the Colts. Uh, of course. By the way, I, I should say Greg is not picking anything. Greg has compromised the podcast and his relationship <laughs> with uh, the guys that work for him. By well, not he's on NFL the Network show. now. He doesn't need to no, that's be a true. part of it. That's true. I forgot about that. Why the Colts, Mark? Well, because I, I had trouble with this one, but I went to the, when I have trouble with the game. Uh, who's the best quarterback? And that's where I went. Andrew Luck. And Taylor? Listen, by the way, it's not like Andrew Luck EJ had a Andrew? good offensive line the last couple years or a very good defense. 
Mm -hmm. They've done this going on year after year. They won 11 yeah. games in all three of his seasons. And Buffalo's a tough. Buffalo took Green Bay down at home last year. You got to note that it's going to be a tough game, but I give it to the Colts. You know what? You know what Buffalo's move is to win a September game early that gets everyone overly excited. Fitzpatrick yes. over the Patriots. EJ Manuel with the last minute uh, win. I mean, they do this every year. This is that win. 2004. Uh, Patriots? Pretty much it's every... Like 31 nothing. I feel like the Patriots... The, the Bills do this every year. All right. Before... All right. Let's take a little break now. Let's let's introduce uh, TD. Uh, we're in a little segment for our preview shows. We love playing this game. It's going to come back. Uh, let's do it. All right. Let's do it right now. Could have been better. <laughs> Dan, you're up. All right. Here we go. The New York Giants give up at least 450 yards... Uh, on defense against the Cowboys, or Tyrod Taylor has a three-turnover meltdown against the Colts. What's more likely? I say Tyrod Taylor what? turns the ball over three times. Really? Yeah. What makes you think that Tyrod Taylor is great at keeping the ball in his own hands? Well, he's playing the Colts, who have a mediocre to poor defense. I don't think they've really been great at forcing turnovers. It's a nice matchup. They're going to run the ball a lot. And the other option seems like a slam dunk. Giants defense, one of the worst in the league, facing a very good Cowboys someone, offense. Someone should point out to the rest of the country that the Colts aren't playing the Patriots every game on their schedule. Like, their defense isn't that bad. Mm. They, yeah, I, the Patriots just make tough. them look it's, bad a couple of times. It's, it's, Tyron it's, Taylor okay. hasn't started a game since he played Andrew Luck in college. So it's possible that if you roll him out into an NFL setting week one, that he's going to make some mistakes no matter what the defense is doing. I, and I can you see know who happen. won that college game? Andrew Luck dropped a bomb on him. I was just hoping. They won like 45 <laughs> to 17 or I'm something. I'm actually impressed you knew that. Wow. I had no idea. I'll just say homework. this. If you're somebody that likes to pick games as well, wait till Tyrod Taylor hits the road and then take the other team. In a tough road venue. All right. That's all I right. like the Bills. I can pick, the I can pick some games I want. <laughs> Bills are going to win. I said pick, Mark. Let's Listen, move I'm on. Listening. Who took Next the Colts up. out of you guys? Wes? I picked the Bills to win. Mm, I like it. Their defense swarms to the ball when they play in that stadium. All right, moving on. The Green Bay Packers head to Soldier Field to face the Bears. And while you would think that, yes, it's exciting when – when the Chicago gets to crowd their stadium and get pumped up, we know what happens when the Bears face Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers is it's a total bloodbath, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, because Green, ten of Aaron Rodgers' touchdowns last season came against the Bears. A quarter, and a quarter of his, touchdowns. a quarter of his touchdowns. And I, I look at this team and I say, is there any reason for hope in Chicago at all? Mm. That was no. my question for the season preview. I'm asking it again because I want a real answer in this game. <laughs> In this game, I think, honestly, we open up with this game and we're going to see what the Bears are because they're going to have to play tough teams in their own division all season long. I don't trust their defense on any level. I could see a bloodbath in this scenario. And on offense, you've got Jay Cutler running the show. So we're going to find out real fast what the Bears are. I'm, I don't think we're going to be surprised. That, let me throw this just out there. I know everyone's down on Jay Cutler, and rightfully so. Is there any way that... Everyone's so down on Jay Cutler that he might surprise us a little bit this year yes. by being a little more proficient than people expect. What, like eight years into his NFL career? No, well, yeah, like ten or eleven. Like years. being, you know, a decent quarterback, you know, posting uh, like an eighty-eight passer rating and has some nice throws, and they win some games. Yeah, I don't think it's that crazy. He's done that. That's what he's mostly done in Chicago. He's been fine. He's, he's. It, I think his problems are leadership. It's off the field. It's not being a great quarterback. But he's that mid-level that we were talking Didn't about he have, like, earlier. Thirty turnovers last year. He had 18 interceptions that led the league. I mean, Drew Brees had more than that. I, just see, I don't see a lot around him with, with the way Kevin Wright is not on the field to start with. What is the, what, why is this the up well, year? Well, Alshon for, Jeffrey might not play in this game. Well, I don't think it's the up year for Cutler. Help. No Alshon Jeffrey potentially. Of course, we know no Kevin White. Brandon Marshall's in New York. So this could be a big year for Martellus Bennett. He's going to have to have a big game for them to have oh. any chance. Next up. Get excited, folks. The Detroit Lions, Kevin Patra's favorite team in the entire world. He loves them, Detroit Lions. They head to San Diego to face the Chargers. And, and Chris Wessling, uh, you are high on the Lions. Are they going to go into San Diego and win a game? I think they are. I think the Lions are the better team. And I, the question I want to know, the Chargers draft Melvin Gordon a round higher than, than the Lions draft Amir Abdullah. Abdullah really outplays him in the preseason. Which team has the advantage at running back in this game between the two rookies? I think right now you would have to say Detroit. But you're forgetting 
the veterans in San Diego who could be pretty good. I mean, Danny Woodhead is a very good third down back. Brandon Oliver, he's not going to get too excited about it, but he's fine. Throw Donald Brown out there. He's still on the team. Get ready, Donald. Yeah, I mean, if you're asking which of the two rookies, if you want to go on what we've seen in August, which is, you know, precarious, but Melvin Gordon did not look like a first-round pick. We know that. I like Oliver a lot more than some others do. I like and, Oliver, too, and I, I think – Early in the year, he could see more carries than Melvin. I'm excited sure. about this one. I haven't really done the, the, good game. the assignments yet, but these are two teams that I think could be playoff teams, be frisky. I think the Chargers are going to win this game. I don't know. Now I don't care. The we don't anyways. care who you think is going to win, Greg. No, oh, yeah. You left us. What so does it matter? I can say who you think is going to You don't get to pick games anymore. That's it. You're is, out. Greg is realizing right about now that he has absolutely stepped in it because he's going to be hearing from Dan for 17 <laughs> weeks. It's better than, I, it's I like, better than the alternative. I liked Greg's idea. I like Mark's idea where maybe we just put a bag on Greg's head during these segments. Well, it was so a it was like a woolen cap that goes like a robber over your entire face. You're not part of the segment. By the way, Wes, uh, you and I are the only ones that think the Lions are going to win on the road in this game. Hmm. Big injury for the Chargers, too. Ladarius Green has a concussion, which is big because Antonio Gates is suspended. That, that, that could come back to home. I'm the really Chargers. curious how the Chargers' offense is going to look. I, I am a general optimist, but their offensive line was terrible in the preseason. It's a lot of new pieces. Like They could take a little while to get out of the gates. Next up, let's head to Glendale, Arizona which is, you know, a suburb, an outlying suburb of Phoenix. Thank you. We learned that <laughs> we were there. Sooner. Yeah, we've been there. That's it. Yeah. That's all I have for this game. Next up. <laughs> the, no. Uh, we, the Arizona Cardinals will open their season against the New Orleans Saints. And, and for me, I want to see what this Saints offense is going to look like. We talked about it. They, they, they beefed up. They're getting stronger. They're trying to, on some level, build a little bit of a bully. They get C.J. Spiller in town. They got Mark Ingram, Kerry Robinson. Maybe Drew Brees throws less, or maybe not. Maybe Drew Brees ends up throwing 40 passes in this game. For all we know, it's still Drew Brees. Wes, do you think that there's a chance we may all just get sucked in and they're going to still throw the ball a lot and Drew Brees still throws for 5,000 yards? Mm. I don't think he's going to throw for 5,000. I think they're going to run the ball more than they have in the past. But that doesn't mean they're going to be like Tony Romo last year where he only throws for 3,700 yards. I, th I do think they want to run the ball more, and they want their defense to play better, and they want those things to go together. Then why would their but defense I, play better, or why would we think their defense? I don't think it will. I think that they went out and basically overhauled the defense, and I, I see a lot of question marks. Well, that's why the whole run thing could blow up, because if you're giving up as many points a game as they did last year, which is the, one, the worst defensive tumble from one season to the next in ages. Rob Ryan's responsible for it. And if you're giving up 30 points a game, you can't just run the ball all day. You don't I, have the option. I also want to see how Carson Palmer looks in this game. We've heard good things about him. Uh, but, yes, this is a 36-year-old guy, second ACL. The whole season rides with him, let's face it. If, if he goes down again, we saw what happened last year. They have no shot. The Saints are starting Delvin Bro, an undrafted guy. Uh, at cornerback. I forget the name of their nickelback right now starter. I mean, the Keenan Lewis injury was huge because they have no depth there. They cut their second round pick. They've done a terrible job adding players. They signed Anthony Spencer, who was supposed to fill in for their blown contract junior guy. Anthony Spencer's now out for the season. I mean, this is this defense is about as thin as it gets. There should be a lot of points here. Uh, Both teams. We have... If we still had hero picks, those are gone now. Uh, Connor Orr would be defending it. but Why is there no hero picks? You can't put that on me. Of course uh, it's a hero pick. It is what it is. West, By the way, West it's going to be written down. Because we're, an utter, we're a rudderless ship now. We have no leader. Uh, Everything's falling apart at the scene. Come back, right? I'm here. The center it's, cannot hold. It's Things fall apart. You can still have hero picks. It's the same amount of people picking games. Five people. Connor has replaced me. He's a younger. He's better looking. He owns a house. It makes a lot of sense. Things fall yep. apart. The center can, cannot hold. Exactly. Our next game, the Seattle Seahawks are traveling to... I'm putting those hero picks in the written version. I don't care <laughs> if you guys even recognize it or not. Cut off the head. Uh... <laughs> Burlap bag. Uh, the St. Louis Rams will host the Seahawks, who are back-to-back -back NFC champions, Greg. And you believe, Greg Rosenthal, that the Seahawks could encounter some trouble against the eternally frisky, at least in the preseason, St. Louis Rams. Well, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to give an opinion on who wins anymore, apparently. No, that's true. But, <laughs> but the Rams did beat the Seahawks in St. Louis with Kellen Clemens. Uh, they lost by five points in an ugly Monday night game two years ago. That was with Bradford. They beat them with their special teams in Austin Davis. So I don't think it's that crazy to imagine this Rams front seven, given the Seahawks offensive line and their offense, a whole lot of problems. I say the first one 
to 13 points wins this game. I mean, this is going to be an ugly defensive game, I don't think, with many offensive touchdowns. I don't know if the Rams get to – the Rams have not had a top 15 rushing attack since 2001. And it's probably not going to have one this game. They're not. Sure. I just don't Seattle. see – this is this is Seattle's knows that it's hard to go into St. Louis and play this team. They're going to be more prepared this time. What? what? I mean, like they didn't know it last year? When, when they went in the No, they had no idea. The now they're just, they just learned it now. Let's, and let's, gonna uh, deal, let's not deal try it this week. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone picked the Seahawks to win. Ah, oh, see, I would have had a hero pick. Oh, it doesn't uh, matter. Uh, 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 Trey Mason, Mason's going to miss this game, though. Bro. It's not too late, Greg, to get in on this. You have 40 minutes. Oh, we didn't even mention. We have to get our listeners to sign up for the Around the NFL Weekly Pick'em Group. Even though I'm not picking... <laughs> the other five guys are Don't all picking. It. It's, a, it. it's a cool engagement. Do it's it. a cool thing. You know, whatever fan wins, we will send you a sandwich in the mail. How about, <laughs> well, how about that? Wow. Listen. Maybe think, we'll come I up with a better at price. Very, at the very least, Greg, you should buy the sandwich. Of course. All right. I'll take the charity <laughs> you know, money I, and, and put it up. Put it I think you underestimated how hurt we all are by this. You're not hurt. Yeah, not very hurt. hurt. All right, let's let's play it again, TD. Another round. Here we go. America's what's favorite. More Greg, what's more likely? The New Orleans Saints and Cardinals combine for 80 points on Sunday, or Jay Cutler gets booed at home in Chicago. Cutler gets booed. I mean, doesn't he get booed every game? Wait, is he gonna, if they announce the offensive starters, isn't he going to get booed? We'll, know, the, we'll, yeah, we'll know this by 10 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> every Hindsight, single... I guess my vision of a 50 to 45 you know, Cardinal Saints game skewed. I thought it was somewhat even, but you might be right. The Cutler thing is... is <laughs> every is, single is bear saint I know loathes Jay Cutler. Yeah. All right, you guys are jokes. Well, no, I mean... I also, I don't know, are the Cardinals going to be like a high-octane offense? I'm I not even so. sold on that. When I think any team playing this. I do. I, I think I the think Cardinals are going to be a high-octane The Cardinals offense. defense is not giving up 35 to 45 points. Oh, I think they could. They've got Greg about, hates the Cardinals defense this year for some reason. They've got one, they've got one reason. average to above-average player in their front seven, Calais Campbell. Name the other one. Who, who was their, who were all these great players they had in their front seven last year when they were shutting everyone down? I don't know. They got a couple. They lost. <laughs> yeah. they got a couple. So week one. Darrell Washington. <laughs> All right, let's move on. That was that was good. Next up, here we go. The Minnesota Vikings, a team with a lot of team of ATN buzz, uh, head to San Francisco to face the 49ers, who you know society has deemed irrelevant in a similar way the uh, way Roto World views Tavon, Wes's boy Tavon, Tavon Austin. Austin. <laughs> so my question uh, is to you, Mark Sessler. Are we really, you know, getting down on the 49ers unfairly here? They can win a game at home against the Vikings. Come on now, right? Well, any home team in a primetime game, I think, gets points. I, for me, though, the question I want is, what do you expect from Adrian Peterson in this game? We haven't seen him in a year mm. plus. He's the difference here. It's a great nightcap to a great, you know, week of matchups. I love this one. because you late you're, game Monday You're not night. really sure about what these teams are going to be. I know we like the Vikings, but we haven't seen this version of the Vikings. Year, year two, Bridgewater. Peterson back in the mix. I feel like we know who Adrian Peterson is. We don't know who the 49ers front seven is anymore. Mm. I mean, th- this used to be a brutal matchup for running backs right. playing the 49ers. But I, outside of Navarro Bowman, who really scares you? Minnesota is missing its starting center and its right tackle. That right. does, in fact, if, you know, that's going to impact what they can do. And Bowman, please. Upset of the week for the 49ers that Mod Brooks is playing in this game. After the charges that went against him and everything that's happened in San Francisco, I I was stunned that they are waiting to see what officially happens and they didn't get rid of but him. But to, to Dan's point, what if the Niners, right, and we've written them off, everyone says, forget these guys, and the Vikings are this NFC preseason, darling. If you open up the year by taking them down in week one, well, we realize we don't know anything. 49ers could be better than we think... thought. Vikings could be worse. Then sure. they're right in the middle. By the way, I'll give you an answer. Adrian Peterson, 27 carries for 112 yards and one touchdown. Wow, okay. That's kind of a letdown. A little bit. Really? Yeah. Yards per carry. Yeah, his, the yards per carry is not great, but he's he's warming up. He gets He's a heavy workload. That's how he's I going for it. three bills. <laughs> Whoa. Now that's a, <laughs> Mark, you took the Vikings, as did Connor Orr and Kevin Patcha. Uh, Wes and I are very lockstep so far in these picks. And that is a sandwich wager. Oh, yeah. Wes versus the old Zeuser. That's right. Uh, for yeah. go get you my lunch. You guys took the Niners. We did. We, did. we took the I, Niners. I feel like Tom Sula is going to. Nice. He's got a nice surprise waiting to spring huh? on the Vikings. There's a Monday headline. Tom Sula, favorite for coach of the year. <laughs> Next up. Uh, <laughs> One week. 
So that'll be off Monday. Winners and losers. Next up, this does not happen too often, so this is kind of neat, to use a 1970s word. The Marcus Mariota-led Tennessee Titans, the number two overall pick, take on Jameis Winston, the number one overall pick, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Chris Wessling, our first look at both of these quarterbacks. Are you excited? I am. I, uh, I'm i more excited for Mariota than Winston just because I there's – I, I have no faith in the Bucks' offensive line. I just don't. Um, but I, my question is, remember three years ago when the Redskins slow played the entire NFL in the preseason and basically mm. hid their offense mm. in RG3's rookie year? Tasty. Are the Titans <laughs> slow playing the entire NFL? Or are they going wow. to run Chip Kelly's offense? Because they talked about it before they drafted Marcus Mariota. They were already building an offense to emulate the Eagles and the Dolphins. I, I think I'd like to see some chip, some chip offense out here. I did hear, and I forget who it was, by someone who was covering that team closely, that they're not showing anything where Mariota was on the move in the preseason, and that is going to be a big part of their offense based on watching them in practice. Someone on their defense today also said that they basically, even if they used a lot of their playbook this week, it wouldn't even be close to what they possess. That there must be well, something be else. Weird. There that must would be, be a bad coaching else. staff. If well, they were no, like, but yep, used it well, all up. But how about this? If, you're not, if you practice nothing at all in games, so maybe you roll out a large you, in, in general game plan, and you don't use your whole playbook anyways. You only use a poor portion of your play, so it's not that crazy. Right. I, I think that Jameis Winston is the one I'm more excited to see because there's a little bit of everything with him. Some of it's bad. Some of it's good. It's oh, you always like watching bad quarterback play. I forgot. No, I mean, I'm just saying he makes some crazy. Austin Davis is like your bumper sticker. I think he's going to be bad in an overly aggressive way that he's never going to give up on plays and he's going to have like some a, confidence. He's like Cutler. Yeah. Well, Mark, just so you know, if we, if we still did it, this would have been a hero pick for you. Who did I pick? The Bucks. I did? <laughs> I'm just realizing this now. It's appalled. This is, this is back to our, for a longtime listener. Well, let's roll Mark with it. Is often surprised by his own. <laughs> let's go Tampa Bay. Take care different. of business. And that's not a crazy pick. I I would guess they're favored in this game. It's not. It, that's there was that's, a lot of multitasking today. I don't even remember. It's in Tampa. Picks. That's not a crazy pick at all. All right, let's move on to. Uh, you know, this is a game that doesn't get me too excited, but listen. What are you going to do? Really? I was going to assign myself this for 1 p.m. I guess no Good one idea. wants it. The Carolina Panthers <laughs> head to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. Uh, and to me, if, you know, if you want, if I'm looking for storylines to watch this, it's a big test for both the quarterbacks getting out of the gate. Of course, we've talked about Newton has all these problems. We talked about earlier in the show, does, has a bunch of number five receivers. And then Blake Bortles, who... Uh, had a pretty miserable rookie season. We have a lot of good buzz that he might be able to turn it around in year two. But I'll tell you what, I need to be, I need to see it on the field in regular season games that count. So this will be interesting to see how Bortles progresses, how Newton deals. Maybe I will assign it to you so you can see it. I'm just well, selling a, it. I'm, uh, Bortles is that's like a, that, that wasn't Dan's goal. Cool. Yeah. I, we, in one of the 4,000 bold predictions we had to make this week, yes. at this point it's all nothing even makes sense anymore, but I do remember writing down that Bortles would have 300 yards and three touchdowns and have everyone on fire about him after this week. Now, will it continue? No, but I do think that this <laughs> offense for Carolina is going to give... You did remember this, that. That's good. Yeah, Carolina's offense is going to be a big issue. And they're going to uh, – Jaguars going to be on the field a lot more than they would in another game because Carolina's going to do a bunch of three and outs. I was shocked that we all picked the Jaguars in this game. That is weird. Uh, the fan consensus, happened. which is what all the uh, people at log on to NFL.com have the Panthers winning. So we go all against the fans, which I always feel good about. Greg would have picked the Panthers. I can feel him about to say that. I like the He's Jags. big on the Jags this I year. I like the Jags. Give him the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, the Miami <laughs> Dolphins. They head <laughs> to FedEx Field or wherever it is in Washington. That's right. Is that correct? I know my state. The Dolphins and the Washington Redskins. And, Greg, listen, we're pumped up. I think we were talking about the Dolphins could have a top defense and a top offense. Are you excited about them? Not really. I, I mean, it's the Dolphins. <laughs> thanks, thanks for playing along. I mean, they're a mid-level team until they prove otherwise. And I do wonder, this is a game where everyone really does expect the Dolphins to win. I don't think it would be that crazy if the Redskins did it. Can Matt Jones... And Alfred Morris Jones. start showing us that they're one of the best one-two punches in terms of backfields in the league. Kind of control this game on the ground against this high-powered uh, Dolphins defensive line. Wes is cracking up. I don't think that's so crazy. <laughs> they're going to talk early in Trey Mason. 
No, that's true. <laughs> but Alfred Morris, what? You you have this weird thing against Alfred Morris. You're like, nope, hate those 1,300 yards every uh, year. You add some Matt Jones to that, I think it's Alfred a pretty Morris nice couldn't start. catch a pass to save his life. Well, that's why and you got Matt Jones. his yards per carry average is under four without RG3 in the, in the lineup. You got Matt Jones in there to catch some passes. Big boy with some nice I passes. like Matt Jones. I, I think that Alfred Morris is going to be out of Washington next year. You want to talk about an onion hanger. Connor Orr picked the Redskins to win this game. The only one of the group who did. Well, good for Connor. You can call them onion hangers. Old onion hanger Orr. Connor's been drinking since roughly 7 a.m. Let's uh, let's keep <laughs> rolling with our next segment of What's More Likely. What's More Likely. Wes, your turn. What's More Likely. Cam Newton has fewer than five completions to Panthers wide receivers, mm. or Kirk Cousins gets sacked at least five times by and Sue in the Dolphins' defensive front. Mm. That's, That's a frightening photo if you're watching on uh, YouTube. A frightening <laughs> photo of Kirk Cousins, which is affecting my decision making. <laughs> it, this is it's it's a confusing one to me. My brain hurts because I'm you know thinking the receivers. I'm going to go Kirk Cousins gets sacked five times against Miami because that seems like a solid over-under. I basically expect it. I, I know I know he gets rid of the ball quicker, but I don't. I'm with you because you got Adamic and Sue, you got Cameron Wake, and you got a bad Redskins They're offensive awful line. Team. So you're saying uh, Cam, if, the, if it played out that way, it would be like a Cam 13 for 27 type performance. There's not a lot of completion. Where it's all to tight ends and running. Right, backs. let's say Olsen has five Their new wide catches. receiver, Mike Tolbert. Yeah, they'll have a few <laughs> backfield. I mean, I could totally see a 13 for 27 from If Cam. you ever start a cult, you're going to want this picture of Kirk Cousins, like, as your follower. Yeah. That guy looks like he's just ready to join a cult. That's he true. also looks like the guy from Team America. I don't know. World Police? Yes, yeah, so I do remember that. I will that. say five-plus times Kirk Cousins will get buried in this game because there's no way he's finishing the season. He'll be hurt. And there'll be a couple. Earl of Mitchell gets four of them. Not a good segment Shock, for the shocking week one performance by Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Bold prediction. All right, we got three more games. Uh, next up, the Kansas City Chiefs take on our Hard Knocks boys, the Houston Texans. Mark, what are you watching for in this one? I'm watching to see if JJ Watt can get an early jump on Defensive Player of the Year against a team that really, honestly, look at Kansas City. Alex Smith, I understand we all know they didn't throw a touchdown last year to a wide receiver. Wait, what? Yeah, it's, the, it's the thing. I thought you were supposed to get fined if you mentioned that. Well, fine me. But I just think this is, a, <laughs> this is the kind of game where, you know, no, this, but... is, this is a nice opportunity for Watt to get a big start against Alex Smith, one of the more dull quarterbacks on the This planet. is a nice opportunity to do your dishes or cut your grass on Sunday. <laughs> Not getting oh, your stop. juices going. Every week one game is special. I don't like Dan disparaging the Panthers game. I don't like Wes disparaging Greg doesn't like anyone game. saying anything negative about a game. In Every week game one. is a special little flower in That's its own true. way. That's true. If I had to West, pick a game not to watch on Rewind all week next week, it's going to be this one. I wow. would maybe agree with that qualification, <laughs> but I, I'll try to watch them all. But Mark not only uh, wants to watch this game, he chose it as his early game. I feel really? differently. Nerd. Yeah. I feel Nerd. differently. Why? <laughs> well, he's just like, well, you know, Hoyer. Got oh, it's Hoyer stuff. Oh, look, no, it's there. I, I, I he didn't it. really say that. La Rabia I did not say that. You love <laughs> Brian Hoyer because you love the Browns. creating a false narrative. <laughs> no, I make La Rabia Hoyer, but Magnifico. It, it does kind of make sense that maybe that was what interests it, me. It does interest me because they're two very, to me, are they just eight and eight teams? Are they something more? I want to know. Mm, all right. I, like I assigned that. myself Chiefs Titans in week one last year. I remember that. I regret it. It can only get better if I Mark and I game. both picked the Texans in this game. We'll see what happens. Mm. All right. Next up, we have the Bengals and the Raiders. Yowza. My question How will Andy Dalton begin his boomer bust campaign? Because we talked about this last week. I really think this is a make or break year for Andy Dalton in Cincinnati. And if he gets out of the gate slow, Against the Raiders team, yes, I understand they might be improved, but you know. But if he gets out of the gate, still has a bad game, and the Raiders steal a game against the Bengals, this could set the stage for some ugliness. Well, and the perception-wise, there wouldn't be a worse team to come out and drop an egg. Exactly. On. Well, the Browns maybe. Maybe the Browns. It's okay for me to but, say that, right? Well, it is. But Browns Bengals is inner division, and that's seen a little Raiders bit differently. Are worse, I think. The Raiders, you go into Oakland, but you know what? The Raiders, I, I think they have a watchable defense, like we talked about, and there aren't this automatic two and fourteen team. And I think they could give Cincinnati some trouble. But the more talented team is Cincinnati. But Dalton has to show he can't just get in the way. Well, and we can see 
this Bill Musgrave offense that no one's talking about for the first time. I'm Is he worried. running Chip's office, offense too? No, he's not. <laughs> and I would be worried that Bill Musgrave holds back what is a more talented wasn't Raiders he, team? Wasn't he Philadelphia's quarterbacks coach last year? No, just more talented I've than had, last year's Raiders. I've had some Raiders fans tell me that there are going to be elements of Chip Kelly's offense. Mm, maybe that's why they hired him. Well, it wasn't uh, in Minnesota when he was coaching those boring Vikings offenses. Wes, that's for sure. If we had hero picks, you took the Raiders to explain why you took them. R.I.P. Hero picks. Mm. That's a shame. It's still a hero pick. You guys are insane. Tisk tisk tisk. <laughs> I want to know why you picked. Yeah, the Raiders. just tell us why you picked the Raiders. There's bangles on the road, laying an egg. That's what they do. <laughs> that is the least surprising pick. You of do the think though that Cincy, and I agree with you, has an, uh, the vastly more talented offense here. Right, but upsets happen. Okay. Finally, uh, just uh, one. Feeling. A 1 p.m. game on Sunday, and I know a lot of people aren't as excited about this game as, as I am or as Mike or as Mark once was, but I know I could throw to Greg. Browns, Jets at the Meadowlands. You love every game. Tell us why this is a great game to watch. Well, this is a great game because it's going to bring Mark Sessler back into the fold with the Browns, with this <laughs> underrated Browns defense and Mike Pettin. It's not going to be that hard to stop Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Browns defense, you know, get an ugly win in week one, get Sizzler back on their side. Uh, here's the thing. You're going into New York. Cleveland could run the ball for 25 yards in this game against that defense. That's what they want to do. They can't throw. No Sheldon it's Richardson. Just, I, that that will help. Good. Leonard Williams. The, by yeah, the way, Darrell know, Revis and Antonio do, Cromartie especially. going against Cleveland's wide receiver core. I just, they had Cleveland has no pass catching tight end. I don't like the matchup for Cleveland's offense on any well, I don't know. It's an, it's an odd number year. That's usually the year when Antonio Cromartie absolutely wastes uh, the <laughs> money that the team gives him. I, well. could, I could totally see this game being 6-3 to three or 7-6 to six entering the fourth quarter. <laughs> sure. I, I do not think this is going to be a shootout. I'll put it that way. Well, I mean, but New York has... What is your level of uh, confidence? Real. My level? My P-scale? No, I mean, yeah, I mean... It's a pretty easy week one matchup. You got the Browns at home it, on paper. How, how confident are Put it this way. As somebody that works for the NFL, I do get texts like two a week, especially uh, during this time that people are like, oh, who should I take in my um, suicide pool? I think they call it a confidence pool now because society deems that suicide can't be said. But uh, I'm saying... <laughs> knockout the, pool? Yeah, knockout Survivor. pool. Survivor? King of the hill. All that stuff. I think the Jets are a very good pick if you have to use the wow. Jets once. At home against a bad Browns team with um, not a lot going for it, uh, oh I, I'm very confident. That's the kiss. That's of the worst advice that anyone's ever given on this show. I mean, that's <laughs> that's it's a survivor pool. I love when people are like, "Oh, let's try to save picks for later." That's how people get knocked out in week one when you pick a game between two bad. I'm teams. okay with you this talking like about a- survivor pool picks and your strategy with that. Yeah, that's that's fine. Picking the games I have an issue with, this is fine. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is like a coin flip game, basically. You give the Jets a little I don't bit think of an so. edge. I think it is. You give he's the Jets got a little edge. The I think it'll win nine games. They better win at home. Put it this way. Like I said, if they blow this game against the Browns, I'm just going for a walk. I think they're not a bad season. They're yeah. yeah. using the Patriots in my confidence pool. Going for a walk to your computer where you're going <laughs> to write about it. Because you're assigned. Mark All doesn't right. want it. One last time. Let's do it, TD. What? Mark? All right, let's roll out our final what's more likely. Which team? Will it be the Browns that makes a panic-induced week one quarterback switch, or will the Texans make a week one panic-induced signal caller switch? Answer me now. After week one, so, <laughs> so week so two. Demanding. Well, week it's, let's put it this way. It, it goes wrong in week one where it's in the final right. couple of minutes. A or Charlie Fry type of situation right. happens where they trade the week one starting quarterback before week two, which that may never be repeated in NFL history. That, Charlie <laughs> that led to a 10-win season for I, Cleveland. I'm going to say that the Texans are more, That's the right more likely because they have a good backup. And I'm looking at these two pictures, if you're watching on video, between Hoyer and McCown. And you can kind of see why everyone in Cleveland just believes in Josh McCown more. A good-looking guy is kind of like Captain America. He's sort of like a cinema I think he's, hero. He's kind of snowed everyone over with his good looks. And Brian Hoyer looks like the lead singer of Live. Uh, very much so. Ed Kowalski. To the point where you can't put them in the same place in the 90s at the same time. This, right. This is how I'm positive that I know the answer to this, that it is the Texans in this scenario. Because we saw it in Hard Knocks. We were in the room when uh, Brian, uh, um, what's his name? Hoyer? 
Ryan Bill O'Brien. <laughs> Jesus. I There's go a Brian home. in there. Bill O'Brien said, listen, hey, bro, you won the job, but it really wasn't a big difference. And be ready, Ryan Mallett. So if Hoyer stinks it out, and then you look on the other side with the Browns, if Manziel was healthy, maybe you could talk yourself into it. But I think if he's coming in, it's gonna be he's going to need the reps. He's going to have to get the arm right. I think the Texans. Do you agree, Wes? I do. I th- for exactly the reasons you said. It was, there's nothing I can add to that. Well, uh, well said statement. Could have said, you could have saved me on the Bill O'Brien thing. We tried. Uh, I thought you were saying Brian Hoyer. Well, you know, there was another Brian involved. We didn't want to steer you wrong. So. All right, so there we go. Those are our picks, and that's our analysis uh, for all the week one games. We will be back uh, on Sunday night for our first Sunday. I call it our flagship show. Our su- I don't know. Yeah. Who cares? Who <laughs> Our it's, flagship show, the flagship program for NFL Network. The flagship program of the Around the NFL podcast is our Sunday night podcast. So make sure you tune in after the Sunday night game. We will get that up, all the reaction to all the games. Uh, so that will be the next time you hear from us. Till then, this is Dan Hansis signing off for the quiet storm, for the mailman, for the boss. I hope we weren't too hard. Don't to forget about, about our friend at the start of the show. Of course, Andrew Siciliano, and then TD, and Brandon, and Sully, and everybody else by the glass. Till Sunday night!